The next catch, and the mother of all tips. If you are able to solve a data sufficiency question very easily, you do not see a catch at all, you are probably missing something. Let me explain this through an example. This is the question, and these are the two statements. Now, most students would think that statement 1 is not sufficient. The question is asking highest common factor of four integers, A, B, C, and D. And at the first look, one thinks that C and D are not here in statement 1. So how can this be sufficient? There is no A or D here in statement 2. And even on combining, D is missing. Therefore, many students, in fact, most of the students, would mark option E as the answer choice. But if E were the answer, that would be very, very straightforward. There is no catch if E were the answer. So if you are getting to an answer without finding any catch, look deeper. You are definitely missing something. And see what you are missing on this one here. If A is 27 and B is 49, A and B have nothing in common. Highest common factor of A and B is 1. No matter what C and D are now, if A and B have nothing in common, A, B, C, and D are not going to have anything in common. And statement 1 leads us to an answer that 1 is the highest common factor of A, B, C, and D, no matter what are the values of C and D. So statement 1 is sufficient. Look at statement 2 now. Same thing, B and C have nothing in common. So no matter what A and D are, the highest common factor is going to be 1 only. And therefore, statement 2 is also sufficient. So no, the answer is not option E. The answer is option D. A very, very important tip, this one. If you are able to solve a question very easily, look again, look deeper. This was the concept, friends. GMAT shots are deliberately kept brief. For an elaborate explanation, please watch the Stage 1 conceptual videos in our program. Thanks for watching.